the instruments are deployed across Canada uh, into the North and Arctic regions. They measure uh, a region of uh, the low altitude near Earth space environment that is of particular interest for radio frequency propagation for signals such as radar signals from Canada's modernized defense systems that are being developed and deployed uh, in our Arctic regions. Those high frequency signals are transmitted from the radar. Uh, they are sky waves that reflect um, from the ionosphere above the Earth's surface uh, and then reflect from the Earth's surface and in doing so they travel around the Earth. That allows those systems to detect and resolve targets or objects um, and can illuminate them at very large distances. So it gives early warning for anything that may be approaching Canada's airspace. They also uh, sense uh, information about the space environment itself uh, in terms of absorption effects, uh, in terms of volatile dynamic space weather activity such as the aurora uh, and other polar effects that can uh, have adverse uh, impact on other types of space-based systems such as our navigation systems such as GPS which many people are familiar with or low earth orbiting uh, new systems such as the Starlink type of uh, constellations that are delivering communications and connectivity internet in remote regions where there's limited ground infrastructure, again, such as in Canada's north. Through the same instrument, you're getting measurements, direct measurements of impact on terrestrial communications, as well as measuring the space environment. And so then now you can connect those two. Um, and then along comes Susan Scone, who's got the most advanced tomographic inversion model for this environment. And we start to collaborate, and she's expanding her model to use this data and all of a sudden it becomes applicable to um, defensive applications that are in this HF domain. And so then we started working with um, DND and DRDC uh, to develop that capacity um, and some of these operational systems that now will use the model and the real-time data. And then boom, now we've got a system that's supporting two distinct classes of users. Um, the data is all publicly available, the science data is all publicly available for the scientific community. Um, and then there's these layered on top applications um, that are targeted uh, for dual use applications.